Day Business Page is brought to you by Fergasso Financial Advisors. We guide for life. Good morning, I'm John Delano and welcome to the Sunday Business Page. This morning, a special interview with the president of West Virginia University, Dr. E. Gordon Gee. We'll ask him about the critical role that WVU plays, both as an educator and as an economic engine for the state of West Virginia. And Dr. Peter Gall, WVU teaching professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering and a veteran commercial pilot, will share his thoughts on the safety of the controversial Boeing 737 MAX, involved in two major commercial airline crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia within the last five months. West Virginia University is our focus of attention this morning on the Sunday Business Page. This is the Sunday Business Page on KDKA-TV. And a very good morning to you. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. Its motto is, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. West Virginia University in Morgantown and its branches is a vital part of that state's present and future economy. As West Virginia faces the need to transition away to some degree from mining educating its population for the 21st century workforce in other areas will become a priority. West Virginia University, in the words of President Gordon Gee, must, quote, create a positive vision of the future for not only the campus and the state, but also for our nation that increasingly mistrusts higher education. Well, why does that mistrust exist? And what will WVU do to create that positive vision? We're so pleased to welcome back President Gordon Gee to the Sunday Business Page. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Gee, great to have you on the uh, show. John, it's always great to be with you. You know, I, Gordon, you are one of the nation's premier educators, and I was just reviewing your resume again and looking at all the different colleges and universities that you have, have uh, led, yeah. you know, from the University of Colorado. Let's see if I can get this right. Vanderbilt, uh, the Ohio State University, not once but twice. And uh, what, did I leave another out? Brown. Brown. Oh, of course, Brown yeah. up there in Providence, Rhode Island, right. and now at West Virginia University. And this is my second time at West Virginia, too, as you know. So. Yeah, and this time uh, you've been there for five years since. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a privilege. You know, I always say that West Virginia is a gift to me, uh, having the opportunity to come back. But uh, it's a it's it's a real opportunity to be here today and talk a little bit about West Virginia and the, and the university and higher education in general. Yes, well, let's we got you for two segments. So I want oh, to so I want to start with first talking about higher education yeah. across America today. Um, is it in trouble? Well, I I think in public perception it is. Let me say this: when I became a university president in 1980, I've been nearly 40 years at this. Um, um, universities and colleges were held in high regard. About 90% of the public thought that we were really very important. Now it's below 50%. So if you think about it on the polling side of it, yes. On the other side of it, uh, uh, universities and colleges now have become the economic engine of this nation. Remember, we've moved from a hardware to a thoughtware economy. Right. And in so doing, the thoughtware, think about Pittsburgh. Think about what is happening with Google and Apple and a variety of other things and CMU and University of Pittsburgh. Uh, they are driving engines for what is going to be the future. The other thing is this. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in 10 or 15 years. We know the jobs are going to disappear. And so universities are creating jobs now, but we need to figure out what they are for the future. I want to come back to the economic engine side in a minute, but I, let's talk about the academic side because I think what frustrates so many families is the high cost of sending a child to universities. And even the state related and the state supported universities are expensive for many families and many children. And then you come out of there not necessarily ready for a job. And so we have a number of folks saying, don't bother with the universities anymore. Go to those, those uh, technical schools and get the degrees or the training that you need that will put you right into a job. What's your thoughts about well, that? Well, university is not for everyone. Uh, you'll be surprised to hear me say that. But, uh, and the other thing is I think that higher education needs to go th through fundamental reform. I think that we have uh, 
lived in the past and looked through the rearview mirror, uh, we need to think about uh, we need to think about uh, the future. For example, you and I were just talking before here, and, and and I said, well, that what's your teaching load when you're talking at CMU? Well, I should say, what is your teaching opportunity? Right. We should not. We, we've got to start thinking about teaching as a fundamental core value. We've got to start thinking about research as also fundamental, but it is not necessarily the driving engine. So I think that what. Uh, what we need to do for higher education in this country is we need to um, reinvent it in fundamental ways, and that is the fact that, and I tell everyone, I think that the problem with universities and colleges is, is there's a tyranny of the department, a tyranny of the college, and a tyranny of the gerontocracy. Mm -hmm. Young people need to run institutions. We need to get rid of colleges and departments and create institutes, working group, and the way that our brain works, we ought to start having our colleges work so that students are in the middle of, uh, of making a difference rather than being on the side. I like that very much. I really do. And I, I, I also wonder about the pricing, though. Are we pricing? Oh, I, I think that the pricing issue has become, uh, has become very difficult for parents. I really do. I think that we've priced a lot of parents out of, uh, out of being able to have access to their institutions. Now, I will say this. I'm very proud of this. West Virginia University is one of the best educational bargains in the country. But right. I've been president of institutions, Brown and Vanderbilt, where where we could charge anything we wanted to and parents would still send their kids. That's not right. What, right. Is, what we have to do is we've got to create a system of higher education in which students can come because they can afford to come, not because they, uh, they simply are, uh, are being priced out of, the, uh, out of the issue. Let me ask you about this, because you mentioned it, and it is so true, the economic engines that these universities have become. But it, it does seem to me, is there a risk that as we focus on sort of the economics of university development, that we move away from academic side, or is there a relationship? Yeah, I, I think that that's the real challenge. And, and my, my view is the fact that what we need to do is uh, institutions need to stop amalgamating themselves. Everyone wants to look like someone else. <laughs> I'm the president of a land-grant university. Uh, established by Abraham Lincoln. We were established to, to make uh, higher education available to everyone. We need to continue to do that. We need to continue to live by our charge. I believe that Catholic institutions need to be fiercely Catholic, and Mormon institutions need to be fiercely Mormon, and land-grant institutions need to be, uh, be servants of the people. And so instead of us moving towards some kind of uh, common view, we've got to keep in our lanes, and in so doing, I think we'll service the people of this nation both economically and academically much different than we are right now. Does the economic side of that mean, though, that the, the businesses, I mean, you're the head oh, yeah. of, a, or, of an organization that's engaged in yeah. business. Well, it's a four and a half billion dollar organization, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so we got, so, so you, if you think about universities as businesses, uh, we're not very good at it, by the way, um, because of the fact that I think we have a lot of wasted time and energy. We're not terribly efficient. But um, I don't think about a university that way. I don't, you know, I'm not the president of General Motors. I can't make a decision and something happens. So therefore, we have to do two things. One, we have to say, what do we do really well? And what is our core? Our core is teaching and learning, faculty, staff, and students. And, what, and if it's not in the core, then let's think about whether someone else can do it better than we can. So let's, let's not believe that we can be all things to all people. I could spend an hour talking about this with you, but we do have to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to focus on West Virginia University. It's a great university, the great university in that state, and clearly a leader not only in West Virginia, but across the nation. We'll talk much more about WVU coming up. Stick with us. Sunday Business Page will be back in just a moment.